as the momentum is coming back into the crypto market we are once again analyzing the situation if you remember previously i've told you that look at the exchanges and their volume now if you look at this one it's just a new version why because last time binance was at the top and it was somewhere like 25 percentage right now it dropped to 18 percentage of the daily trading volume whereas bitru gained last time when we were talking about this bitru was like 17 18 percentage right now it increased to 19.32 so that's like people do understand what's happening in the market and they are trying to realign their portfolio so when we talk about the market regaining reshaping as we enter into a new bull market and as we move through it look at the volume highlighted here that's the biggest change which i want to convey you because as we go through this will be connected to other items right you look at the all coin cycle how it consolidated in the last cycle what we are looking at then you know look at the btc itself how it's moving and what you can anticipate then you can step back right and look at the bitcoin chart itself and look if there is something similar happening now yes there is something similar which happened previously so that means we're gonna go higher mm -hmm. then we may actually come back and create a new low and then go back higher if that is a possibility and the price is going to repeat that one because this particular pattern which you see in the rsi here you saw something similar here right you were coming to the downside and then eventually you went up but you know you didn't actually go to the oversold territory in the rsi you got a sell-off right now we don't know whether the exact same thing is going to repeat but we can look at this and say okay last time that happened so this time when it's going high if you are in btc and you were like okay i missed the top i want to take something below my good range fine don't wait till that 60 65 mark try 58 60 or 55 60 when if you get that jump out now this is xrp on a three day it's really getting interesting from here as the indicators are showing you bullishness and the wise men go early and they will have to wait long so xrp bdc on a weekly shows it's standing on that support and moving higher whereas xrp usd on a daily shows yes we are near a breakout but yes we do also need volume to come in and push us to the upside now i would also like to take you guys through some of the documents this is from bis so that's the bank of international settlement then another research publication highlighting the importance of xrp and you know they kind of show you what they kind of think about it it's not what we think it's about the researchers who went in and try and try to actually check out what this ledger is about is it actually working properly do they use this in a modern way so xrp is a modern crypto asset right they developed or uh, developed by ripple the labs and they give you the background blah 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 and then they come here right flow index is a pair of indexes suitable for characterizing transaction frequencies as a source now what do they say in this we study global structure of xrp network and construct so what you need to understand is that it is published in may 2021 and it was being started here in this conference so you do have to understand researchers are pushing their understanding here and look at the keyword there power distribution that's not a small deal because when you look at the bank of international settlement document now you have both positive and a little bit of neutral news here because they show you cryptocurrencies such as bitcoin that are sustained by costly computing you know they quote the proof of work system tend to be centralized now this is being in a bank of international settlement document they go through the stuff and give you this this stretch or speculation so as they take you through this you know you can like okay this is what's happening in the market the valuation is like this what we are looking at is like this blah 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 and everything then they give you this so as you continue there is ample debate on the censorship resistance 
decentralization and legal nature of cryptocurrencies so you look at the first two so that's script uh, censorship then decentralization and then you come to the legal nature of other cryptocurrencies you get the sec 2020 right so it's like okay fine so what are you looking at in that particular reference so you can actually jump down now when you go to the uh, references list here you can directly okay what we will do is directly get on to that sec and we're gonna get uh, towards this sec 2020 so the document is talking about sec charges ripple and two executives with connecting 1.3 billion unregistered securities so that's the legal side of it so right now everyone understand the proof of work system is not that great and all of them are looking for a sustainable finance a green finance so as we move ahead in this market and the cycle do understand changes are coming so the flow of money will be different and that's why as i was showing you the altcoin market cycle i was like okay look at this this is the altcoin market it consolidated like these in the past but right now when it's entering into a consolidation you kind of see this in xrp now people will say okay the volume is going down yeah that's what we want when the volume is at the bottom the rsi is at the bottom macd is crossing to the upside or turning to the upside that's what you need and that's what we are getting right now in the market welcome to the scientific investor family where we discuss crypto and science behind investing regularly so today i also would like to share the new intro with you guys So that is the new intro which I would be using from here. Now let's directly jump into the market, right? Because market is showing you some green in the last 24 hours and as of now today. So when you look at this, you also have to understand volume is decreasing in a lot of coins. Why is that important? As I just talked to you, we were looking at different coins and understanding, okay, that's how things are evolving and whenever the volume goes down you're looking like when if the volume comes up and the price is being pushed up that's a good narrative so chances are right now we are going to move higher right the indicators shows us the possibilities are higher for the price to move now you can look at it in a zoomed in view in an hourly or four hour chart but what gives you the advantage is taking a look at the long term view so here, look at the RSI. Whenever it has been here for 78% of the time, it bounces back to the upside. Now, when we were in a bear market, the stuff was we are creating a lower high. We are not actually going higher high and trending higher. Whereas this time, now if you look at this one, you come back into this range, you bounce. You come back into this range, bounce. So it's being repeated again and again with a trend to the upside. So now that's great, that's huge. Because when you consider this, in previous wave two, you got the structure in wave one, in wave two. In wave two, you got the structure kind of a double top in the volume. You went down in volume and then you pushed to the upside in the next wave. So right now, you are watching all of these factors playing in the market. So as you go in, you can also add in, say the indicators here, we would actually add volume because that's going to give you some idea as we discuss through it today so on a three day this is what you are looking at so what we usually look is for the weekly volume because the weekly volume and the price action candle gives you a lot of information say here when you got this you really popped through the roof fine you hit a level of resistance then the volume went back down and as you started getting green 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 candles in the volume bar you were preparing to the bounce right now you haven't yet had that continuous green candle where you are getting this mixed opinion meaning you got a green then you got a red then if you are getting continuous green candles on a weekly that's going to push you through and that's why i'm considering like if this is going to repeat I personally think we are going to do like August end to reach as a retest for the recent top of $2 and from there we would be coming with a consolidation say a range of like 
1.2 to $1.8 dollar kind of mark as a week down like this and then come back close at one one point two dollar and then continue higher so from there it would be like five to seven eggs which would take us like six to seven eight nine dollar now that being said that's the next impulse so as we are talking we know there are impulsive waves fine great so we got this impulse here the second one third one fourth so the chances are high we are going to get one more but when you zoom out and look at this those are kind of impulse which you get on a change in trend this was the bearish trend you got into a consolidation now we are entering into a bullish trend now you will get a parabolic run now that parabolic run here in the wave 2 will kind of equate towards 15 to 20 dollar xrp i know when we are sitting at 0.6 dollar it's really hard to believe that but when you look at old videos when we were here at 0.12 when we are here at 0.15 we were talking about the same we are going to go towards 2 to 2.4 dollar now yeah we didn't exactly touch that range but we did manage to touch 1.99 and we as a group were able to take the profit at 1.91 now that's not the exact top but we did good that's not the bad stuff next stuff important here in this market is your patience you enter into a right asset at the right price great but if you don't have this level of patience it's really gonna hurt you look at bitcoin for example first you pumped then 152 days of consolidation the next one you pumped and again similar 153 days of consolidation whereas the next one was even higher in pump and longer in consolidation a month more say 183 days day now you take that into account here and you look at this okay like here was 182 then the next one was 183 after which you got like 120 and then it started ramping up so you get kind of three consolidations which we call as wave one wave two wave three because we are not like this is a bear market right we're like this is a bull market yeah take this into account in traditional market when it drops 10 percent we say that's a correction fine great but when you drop 20 30 percentage we say that's a recession now keep this in mind that's kind of a daily structure in crypto it happens mostly then in a bear market meaning the prices go down too much 40 50 percentage now that too happened to in between two three four months in crypto so i don't actually take that traditional term of bear market and put it into crypto because that's not kind of working here here the bear market is extended correction which is below 60 percentage the prices of assets goes from 60 to 80 percentage to the downside and that's what's bear market for crypto for me now the actual terminology of bear market yeah as others use that's correct but i don't think that's appropriate for crypto market now take this into account for the current market cycle last two times when we went say in 2011 first and second one was something similar again in 2016 2017 it was similar the first one second one was similar great now here the third one was bigger because the pump was higher here the third one was smaller because the pump was not that higher now come back here we are still doing the second one we just had the first one which was like extended for 88 days of consolidation say 500 days now again if you're looking that here it's not actually a huge pump considering the move from 3300 to 14500 which is somewhat like 5x and then from that 14x you went to 60 so that's like again 3x it's not higher in roi so i personally anticipate it would be like 450 days fine but in between here too you go back and retest the top so that will be coming so the possibility of what we spoke about here is still there meaning you can go back up you retest this zone say 50,000 range and then go back down now that can be a flash crash like this but that was like March 2020 we agree but if that's repeating here you need to be careful now you can look at the indicators rsi is showing you it can break to the upside that's great news for coming weeks ahead that's great if the price is moving from thirty thousand to fifty thousand in btc great news because that's going to push a lot of altcoins to the upside where they are preparing to run and xrp is one of them you can kind of look at uh, that same 
time frame chart which is a three day chart and the xrp is going to move to the upside with the rsi at the bottom slowly rounding back up and the macd preparing to cross to the upside last time when it crossed we ran up before that we ran up so all of these time in the bull market trending up zone the moving average come to the downside it hits and bounce it hits and bounce so one two and if that's going to repeat here that's the third time and each time rsi and macd gives you that indication and right now it's the same so let's see what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks so here as we wait for the next rally to the upside and the market is showing you green that's all positive that's all good but if you are in a lot of different assets now you need to actually look at this does the fundamental of that particular asset support your narrative it's really important because when we talk about xrp here it's literally obliterating the market you look at researchers from various universities coming out looking at this at a time when bank of international settlements and all the other supranational institutions like imf un world economic forum and others are doing stuff for what that's something which you need to understand they are all talking about green sustainable finance and they are looking for technology and the technology happens to be distributed ledger and they are talking about central bank digital currency now this is another document from world there's another document from uh, bank of international settlement and when you go into this it gives you that idea okay what we talked here a year back in detail it's coming into play look at this the world sales center bank digital currency for most of the countries mm -hmm. and what would they be kind of doing which is a direct liability of the central bank mm -hmm. central bank digital currencies can be designed for use either among financial intermediaries only that's world sales central bank digital currency or the wider economy so in a socialistic country you see mostly it would be retail central bank digital currency even if they are moving towards the socialist nature that's going to happen because that's like next 10 20 30 years then for the world sales central bank digital currency it would be kind of you know you look at financial intermediaries they would still be there but the difference is this time around the financial intermediaries won't be eating a lot of your payments won't be costing you too much in terms of price and time that's what they want right sustainable green finance with that infrastructure which allows you to kick out intermediaries in terms of price and time so they are looking at what the latest generation of retail fast payment system so that fast payment system is being adopted slowly in domestic and international payments now payment is not just messaging it's also the settlement of this so as you go through this digital era of private bank non-bank payment service and all others they talk clearly read this you get that idea here they are giving you that example of how stuff is happening with the faster payment service it's going in every way it's not only the banks it's the non-bank payment service providers as well they all do the same stuff so you can directly if you want to now this is up to you i'm going to put all these links in the description so if you want to actually get a taste of what this really means you will understand that right when you come to the downside the psp the uh, payment service providers show you like this due in part to make market power and low expected margins private psps often do not cater sufficiently to these groups so as you move you kind of see okay banks are going to do that PSPs are going to do this. So, what are you really looking at in this structure? Say so central bank grants accounts to the commercial banks and other PSPs, and domestic payments are settled on the central bank balance sheet. Now, when people say, okay, this is not going to be the XRP, it's kind of going to be a stable coin built on the XRP ledger or something similar. And we heard it previously. If that comes out, it's supported by xrp so if you see usdc usdt you look at them it's like dollar as reserve whereas what you are looking at on the other side of this is that okay fine this is happening but xrp ledger is going to be the base and xrp is going to be the reserve so if someone want to use that stable coin and they're just buying it up 
it's being backed by this so the demand is still there you need to actually understand the supply demand side of this before you jump in and become euphoric in any asset so when you see this stuff on a shorter time frame you're like okay this is happening in a shorter time frame i'm kind of seeing a uh, adam and eve pattern in xrp and that's great we've been talking about this we've been showing this now if you want to actually directly look at different price fluctuations it can directly jump on to the chart of xrp from the coin paprika which usually reflected uh, more better right so right now when you're looking at it it's the same pattern same stuff rsi is breaking about this trend so now this is a photo chart it's a real time chart which i'm looking for you guys so as we see the price is breaking out in this trend that's positive that's bullish on a shorter time frame now we want to validate that on a longer time frame take a step back now this is the 12 hour chart what you see is another trend which if you need to break it you're like okay i have to move through this so that's like 0.66 so if we break above that it's another symbol that we are moving higher and then okay delete all of these and look at the rsi at that time what will it show it's clearly something like this and if you move above that that's a bull flag on rsi on a daily if you have a doubt you can zoom back and look at this yes that's a bull flag on the rsi and as we break that it's now becoming macro scenario here right as we break that one we are breaking through all of these range of consolidation in rsi itself and moving bullish to the upside why because that's really important to understand because the overall general trend to the downside is already over we have moved out of it right now we're waiting for the rsi to bounce back in to the positive territory and as that happens wait for the price to retest 1.82 dollar if you missed that now if you miss that in a lot of different assets and you're looking at okay i actually want an update on this particular asset is it going to reach this level will i get to take profit in this level and all of these when you look if you want that kind of update for your portfolio you can look at the patreon the link is given in the description below so guys if you received value for your time please do hit that like and subscribe button that supports this channel a lot so i'll meet you guys on the next video bye for now